Welcome to Guns of Gear Network, everyone. Appreciate you tuning in. Today we're going to take a look at the SDS Imports TSOS Mac 9 DS 1911. I also like to refer to it as the John Hick Tricado. Stay tuned. Welcome back guys, appreciate you tuning in. So today we're going to take a look at the Military Arm Corp or the Mac 9 DS 1911 double stack. Um, I also like to refer to it as the John Hick Tricado. So um, obviously this is very staccato like. The good thing about 2024 that we saw come into the industry is a lot of new interest uh, with these companies trying to produce a budget friendly 2011 style pistol and everybody i guess kind of leans on sti formerly sti now staccato as far as kind of the standard entry level 2011 and their price point for the staccato p which this one mimics is around 2500 dollars, which was usually out of most people's budget so these are still not cheap in the grand scheme of pistol pricing but it is very budget friendly compared to a staccato and then you get into the ones that are even more expensive um, Alice Gunworks you name it so forth they're just expensive so it kind of kept everybody a lot of people I won't say everybody a lot of people out of that 2011 style pistol uh, market so with that said um, I bought this uh, my own money it was not sent to me by the anybody and um, I've got about eight hundred and eighty dollars in this including shipping to my FFL then I had to pay transfer fees and stuff like that uh, so what you get in the box here's the box itself you get the pistol I've already added a few things just kind of I got ahead of myself with videos but I went and added a few things but it, it's a good reference to what you can do with the pistol you get two magazines uh, which are in this case here it does come with the case uh, two magazines cable lock uh, nice case. It's very STI staccato like. Uh, staccato has a case like this. I prefer this over the hard cases. Again, very staccato like, and we'll talk about that. And that's why I call it the Turcado because uh, they are made in Turkey. Uh, John Hick. Uh, so, but uh, user manual, cleaning rod, cleaning brush uh, does come with an RMR base plate that I've already installed. This is the original site. This magazine you see laying here is an extra magazine I bought. I'll show you that here in a minute. Um, but this is the original site that came on it. This is very hard to remove. So I did, when I was reviewing, do, looking at reviews, trying to decide what I was going to buy in this budget genre of 2011s because you've got the Grisson, you've got um, TSOS themselves that makes quite a few variations in price points and then the Military Arm Corp, which is also an arm of TSOS, SDS Imports, um, stuff that they bring in. And this was the more expensive of the bunch, but yet less than the Springfield Prodigy, which comes in at about 1500 So um, this one has an RMR cut, which this most of them don't. They have the uh, smaller one for like the micros. I prefer the RMR on a pistol like this. But this right here was very hard to remove. Um, that was discussed in those reviews that I saw. Uh, it took a little bit of prying. Some people hit it with a rubber mallet, just letting you know. Uh, it only It's only held on by two screws right there. Uh, this is just a set screw for this rear sight. This rear sight is supposedly Glock patterned, um, so any Glock sight would work in their stuff, supposedly. Hadn't tried it, don't need to, but I just thought I'd make a mention of that. Uh, user manual, it does come with some screws and tools uh, with the uh, pistol. It has a hang tag that's on it uh, when you buy it out of the box. It says Mac 9 DS 9 millimeter 9 by 19 forged frame and slide. So this is a steel frame, not an aluminum frame. Even the Zoscato, you can get either or the aluminum or the steel. Uh, me personally, steel on steel is better than steel on aluminum, but 
Either way, I'm, I would be good with either one, but this one is a all-steel construction. Other than, obviously, the polymer grip module, aluminum magwell, 17 plus 1 capacity in the magazines. The magazines are made by Checkmate, which I'm pretty sure, don't hold me to this, that Checkmate makes the magazines for, like, Staccato and other higher-end 2011-style uh, pistol makers. Uh, user manual, very clean and easy to read and understand. Talks about uh, everything from safety to cleaning, uh, warranties. Uh, it's got a schematic of all the parts and pieces, how it breaks down. And it's got their information on the back. Uh, Knoxville, Tennessee, Military Arm Corporation, toll-free number and their website right there. So when I say the uh, John Hick, uh, obviously you know what I'm referencing, uh, Turcado, um, because it's made in Turkey. And um, the cool thing about this thing, the badging is very small and minute. It actually just says Military Armament Corporation, Knoxville, Tennessee, right here on the frame, not the slide, and then the serial numbers. That's it. There's nothing anywhere else other than on the grip module itself uh, with the Military Armament logo. Um, if you even look, this... Uh, Patterned grip module is similar in pattern to a staccato. Depends on which staccato, but uh, they come out with a very similar pattern. So for you guys that want to do potentially stippling or send it to be stippled, it does have a very distinct border that you could easily do, you know, kind of a DIY stippling, again, keeping it budget. A new grip module, don't know which ones fit. I do. I did read in some of the reviews and people talking about them on forums that they have switched these out. Um, I can't promise how it's going to fit, what your modifications you may have to do. Um, I'm okay with this one. It's not overly grippy, um, like dragon scales or anything like that. So some people may prefer that. To me, this one's okay. Um, 25 per one inch line uh, checkering front and rear. Aluminum magwell. The Springfield Prodigy does not have a magwell at their higher price point at about, I think their price point's around $1,500, $1,600. Um, rail for accessories such as the light this is a nightstick again rmr cut um, plate drop in this is the vitatu uh, red dot that i've done a review about excellent sight i like it uh, fiber optic front sight it does not co-witness very well so the the vitatu does have a um, channel for like kind of a rear sight already in it it doesn't co-witness exactly right and that's been discussed in some uh internet talk also skeletonized hammer skeletonized trigger uh this is a staccato gen 2 style um uh magazine release now when i say that i don't know if a replacement if you wanted to buy a staccato one would it fit i don't know it's just definitely in that style um everything else is the same as far as staccato or 2011 styling or 1911 um front and rear slide serrations for easy uh, manipulation of the slide the action is smooth is it as smooth as a hand-fitted uh, gun? No, uh, but this is a production gun, so that's how they keep the price down. Um, it's not a lot of hand-fitting in things. The thing about 1911-2011 type pistols, uh, a lot of people tune them. You can either send them out to be tuned, a lot of people tune them themselves. They adjust trigger pulls, a lot of different things you can do. Spring kits, I've already ordered some springs for this. I do feel like, I've not shot it. But I will say this, just based on my experience with 1911 and 2011 pistols, this one feels a little oversprung to me. Um, so I'm going to maybe do a little playing with some tuning it up with some different springs and things. I'll report back as I do those videos. But uh, this one also comes with a bull barrel. This is one of the few besides the spring field in that budget line. So you're looking at some of the SDSs get down as low as around 750-ish, 650-ish price point, all the way up to like the Gerson that comes with the red dot. It's at about $1,000 roughly. Um, this one is the only one other than the Springfield Prodigy in this budget lineup with a bull barrel. Now, when I say budget lineup, Springfield pricing and below, only one that has the bull barrel, um, bushless uh, bull barrel system ambidextrous safety one of the things that was discussed in a few things i read about 
the left side of the safety is ambidextrous, but the left side is smaller than the right side. And a lot of people rest their thumb on that. I don't have a problem with it. I think somebody reached out to uh, SDS or Mac and asked them about that. And they said it was for in case people wanted to carry this pistol, like conceal carry. Um, and they wanted that a little smaller when it's pressed up against the body. Uh, felt like it needed to be there. I don't know. I'm okay. Again, it's a 1911 2011, so you can easily switch parts out, hopefully. Um, anytime you start switching parts around in a 1911 or 2011, from different manufacturers there's different tolerances so sometimes there's a little bit of hand fitting that goes around that needs to be done sometimes they don't fit at all and you just want to deal with that so i would do your research if you're wanting to switch out some parts and understand that um but it is a uh, really nice construction it uh i was going to tell you i'm going to, have to look this up real quick give me one second so the coating on this is called Tenifer CPQ Coated. Uh, really nice finish. I mean, fit and finish on this thing is very nice. Um, the magazines. So this is an actual staccato magazine. This is the 20-rounder with the base plate. Uh, fits perfect. Um, I've heard other magazines fit this too, whether it be the Prodigy magazines, blah, blah, blah. You can try it, but uh, just FYI, uh, SDS did send an email uh, that they've got a new shipment of the 17-round uh, magazines, and I ordered one. So the magazines themselves, um, so this one... Again, this is a staccato, so, and it's a 20-rounder. This is like 80 bucks. The 17-rounders from uh, SDS is $57. So, again, not cheap. This is not, you know, Magpul Glock magazine kind of thing at 12 bucks. So you are, it is a little pricey on trying to get more magazines. With all that said, though, what you see here, including my extra magazines, the red dot, the flashlight, the springs I have coming in to kind of play with tuning it a little bit, I'm about $1,300-ish in it with everything. So that's still below, uh, that's four magazines, the red dot, the flashlight, the springs, everything um, compared to what you're going to spend about $1,500, $1,600 in a Springfield. The Springfield has MIM parts, M-I-M parts in, internally a little, a few of them. This one has none. So no MIM parts, bull barrel. Um, Springfield does not come with the mag weld. This one does. So there's a lot of things going on here at this price point that I think is great. Trigger pull on this. I'll do a trigger pull test real quick. Uh, what I found was it's about five-ish pounds. Some people may think, well, that's ridiculous for a 2011. However, these are production guns, and they have to make sure that they're safe. People may be carrying this, like a concealed carry, and as a corporation, they have to make sure that the trigger pull is at a safe weight. Duty uh, trigger weight is between four and six pounds. A lot of agencies say it has to break at five pounds or whatever, so this one breaks just right at five pounds or below. Let's see what I'm doing. Oh, I, must have, I didn't have the grip safety pushed in all the way. Oh, and my safety's on. Hang on. Sorry. Let me reset it. Sorry about that, guys. Right at five pounds. Let's do it one more time. And again, changing the trigger weight on this is super easy. There's a, numerous videos and tutorials about it. Uh, just right at five pounds. So the thing about a 1911 trigger, when it's five pounds, it doesn't feel five pounds compared to other pistols. Uh, flat face trigger, it does have a slight curve at the top and bottom that my pad of my finger fits in perfect. Um, metal trigger, it does have an adjustable uh, screw for over travel, skeletonized uh, hammer and um, ambidextrous safety. Uh, fiber optic front sight, they do include a extra rod. Uh, if you ever lose that or break it or whatever, they do have that. So, But anyway, guys, if you're looking for a budget-friendly 2011-style um, pistol without the huge cost of you know staccato pricing, again, I'm a huge fan of STI staccato. Um, been a fan of theirs for years. I'm not saying anything negative about staccato at all. They make excellent products, no doubt about it. Um, but 
again, if somebody's wanting to get into a 2011 style pistol at a reasonable price of, like I said, $1,300 for everything you see, a uh, really good uh, option for you is this one. They do make some cheaper ones. So if you're, I'm looking at doing some competition shooting with this down the road. So I wanted to go ahead and spend a little bit extra compared to the other SDS models that are 650-ish, if you can find them in that, they're usually around in that price range, I've heard. Um, I decided to go with this that had a little bit more features and benefits that I preferred. But good thing about this one, you can kind of build it as long as your budget allows, and then you can, but again, try not getting where you could have bought a staccato if you just waited and saved your money kind of thing. So again, like a grip module, sometimes those are $350. So I'm going to leave mine as is. I may stipple it or have it stippled. But anyway, guys, appreciate you tuning in. If you got any experience with the Mac 9 um, DS, please let us know that. Uh, that would be greatly appreciated. And as always, guys, like, share, and subscribe. Bring another video shortly. Have a great day.